Capcom. Here we are. Let your crafts begin. Begin! Hello, everybody. Kathy, Karen, hello. Heidi, I saw you pop in first. Angela, hello. Kim, hi. Melanie, hello. Miss Fatima, Cindy Lynn. We're um, making gnomes. Aren't those pretty? Look how cool those are. I came home, he says, go look what I did. And I came out and look at it. Awesome. All right. Hi, Rebecca, hi, Gail. Lori, I'm so hi. excited. Karen, hi. Oh my gosh, so cute, I know. All right, we will welcome everyone. As everyone is joining, you are on the official Ken's Creations mm -hmm. channel. Yes. So that's our YouTube channel or Facebook. Yep. Now, normally we're on our sister channel on mm -hmm. Thursday, yep. but today I wanted to show you how to create these. You guys all know I have a thing for gnomes and I wanted to show you from start to finish and a lot of third party stuff goes in here mm -hmm. and we want to show you it all. So, first of all, get excited. Second of all, all the links for today's video are underneath the video or underneath Facebook's description. Plus, we have people that can send to you the links. The most important links you want to talk uh, or hear, I should mm -hmm. say, is if you want the option to buy this bundle, you want to join our clubhouse. There you go. Join the clubhouse. Also... We may be giving away some gnomes in the clubhouse Ooh. tomorrow because I'm in a gnome kind of mood and look at how cute these gnomes are. Hi, Sandy from Spokane. Well, hi, Sandy, hi, from, Sandy Spokane. from Spokane. Do so, we know Sandy? Um, sure. Sure. So we are going to show you how to make these from start to finish. If you have questions, let us know in the comments. And if we miss your question, please know it's because Sean is Oops. Sean is trying to um, do this and questions, but we always try to get back okay. to you. So before we get started, I do want to let you guys know, for those of you who are a YouTube member, so our subscription, get excited. So tomorrow is my first Ken's Confession. And if you don't know what we're talking about, we have a subscription program built right into YouTube. You can join at three different levels. The first one's 99 cents. You get emojis. And our first project will be next week. It's M&M Ornaments Ooh. with the file included. Is that the one from way back when? Yeah. Wow. It's a blast from a past. Yeah, it is a blast from the past. Those yeah. Were, those were kind of fun. Yeah. And then the second level is Ken's Confessions. And the third level is the Ken and Sean show, which we had last Friday. And it was mm. a lot of fun. So join, because tomorrow will be my first Ken's Confessions. And I cannot wait. Um, you can join down below. Or if you're on your phone, I'm going to have Sean play a little video here. Yeah, I can't see that. From I there. know. I'll let you do that one. So this is how you can sign up. Yeah. Membership. So just click the link down below. And you're actually going to want to open it in your default browser. And this will open up all three levels of our subscription. Now, it's really important to know that if you join for the top subscription, mm -hmm. which is the Ken and Sean show, yep. you also get Ken's Confessions and Ken's Tribe. So it's like, you get all of it. Get them all. Yeah. I also want to show you how our link trees work. Now, this video was made prior to me making some updates to our link trees. But link tree is a convenient way for us to put you in one landing page for all the links. All the links. And the three main links we have in this one is our official Ken's Creations, mm. the chalky side of Ken's Creations, yes. and all of the products used in today's project. Well, there you go. So how you access those, you will actually just click one of the links. It will take you to our link tree, and then you can scroll at your leisure, pick your favorite thing, click it. Head over to the where it takes you. You can go back, look at all the links. This is an easy way for it to not be overwhelming with so many links mm -hmm. down below. I still do have the links down below, but mm -hmm. this way you're not like, whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa. So there you are. Um, I'm going to go grab something over there. You want to tell them our new... Yes. We are on, yes, I'm going to go for get those the other who aprons. Notice, I think Heidi and a few others notice, hey, new aprons. Yes, new aprons. Um, aprons are kind of our 
paint. Yes, they are. These came, of course, this came from Disney. We got to uh, show them our whole collection. Yeah, we should show you the whole. Let's show them our whole collection. Good evening, Jessica and Tyler. It all started with our, our Janet. denim apron. Here you go, Shawnee. Yeah, so the, that one. this is the original one that um, they gave out. Actually, the original is a black. We don't have those anymore, do we? No. The original was a black polyester of some And the kind. reason why we're kind of on an apron kick is That's we right. hear all the time in the comments, you guys are the only ones that use aprons. Oh. Just saying. So this is the new updated so one, which is done in a black We bought denim. this one in Disney for Halloween. Yep. I didn't go live, so you guys didn't see it a lot. And then we, we bought... This one for Christmas. We should be wearing this one, but I got new ones and I got too excited. This so cute. With Chip and Dale. And then of this course, one yeah. is going to be more for when Sean does videos like on the Glowforge or really technical because this one, even though it's kind of hard to see, is the droid factory, like where you go to build your little droids. And then this one we got today because I needed an everyday one. And I actually like the feel of these. Yeah, it's kind of a, almost a, a thin canvas. Yeah, and these are celebrating the 50th anniversary, I think. You got Disney. You got the Disney wheel. They're cute. You got a little, the expo. Yeah. I love them. Lo loving it, loving it. Charlotte, hello. Barbie, hi. Uh, let's, who else is here? Sherry Ann, hello. Tyler, good evening. I think we've got a... Okay. How do you join? Look down on those links down below. So, if you want to join the clubhouse, we'll give you a link there. If you look down on the links below, plus we have some admins. I'll get my computer up and running. So, by the end of the live, we will have all the links um, and stuff. But we're going to get started because, oh my gosh, you guys, this is so fun. And the first thing we're going to do is actually cut out these wood things on our Glowforge. Now, I love our freaking Glowforge. We have done so much. So the Glowforge will actually, we cut out the gnome shapes and I actually cut out the joy. So the little hands and everything. Yes, Sean, how can I help I you? I need a phone for us to go over there. I forgot to grab my phone. You got yours? I do. Thank you. All right. So Sean's got to get that set up. I thought that was set up. I'm so sorry, uh, guys. It's my apologies. It's so rare that we use it. So Okay. So I'm going to show you... Um, the desktop of what we're doing so that way when he does this so we already have everything ready to go for my glowforge so these are all the files i'll be using today and once again if you end up um joining the clubhouse this is what we'll end up cutting i'm gonna go turn on the glowforge so it can start doing its thing while sean gets his I thing get my thing going and so i'll have the camera on you sean so okay. say hi to everyone while i get the glowforge You're hello going. is the camera on me yes okay there it's kind of Kind of weird. I gotta find a certain access or app called Epoch. I think it's that one. And are we on? We are on Wi-Fi. Yes, not now. So we'll plug this onto our little handheld system. Make sure it is a little, a little bottom heavy. Let's see how we're That's better. We'll go like that. Okay. I'm going to go like that. And now we just got to double check to make sure it's in. I'm going to click in this. Let's see. I need. How can I help I'm you, just Sean? Gonna I'm just going to shrink that for a half second. Okay. Camera. Include an epoch, so it should be there. Sorry guys, I thought this was ready. I apologize. Yeah, my apologies. yeah I thought totally forgot that we were gonna. There it is, yay! Okay. And you can have your screen back. Ta da! Ta da! Okay, are we good? Yes, we can go to this camera anytime you're ready. Okay. My gimbal drives me nuts. This one is the DJI. Mm, they call it the OM5. So this is the latest and greatest one. Latest and greatest. It's really cool. It telescopics too. 
Okay, I have my computer up and running so I can get you links here. So let me go ahead and share my desktop. I have my computer on now. I'm going to let Sean do the voiceover while we do this. You're going to go over there with this? I'll go over that, but okay. you can tell him what I am doing. Sure. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'll tell you right now, we have the Glowforge machine up and I have medium draft board in there. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and move some of these stuff around. So anything that's in this area that's kind of the black color is areas that I'm going to use for this design, just not on this cut. So if I put it right here, and I'll zoom in here in a sec, but like this is stuff I'm going to cut right now. So this is the gnome cutouts. And normally it's not this slow, it's just because we are streaming. The Glowforge then slows down a little. Okay, so you can see I'm zoom in. This uh, Glowforge uses its own software. It's super easy to use. They've been adding other things, but it's it's good to know that you're using their software. It's built into essentially the machine. So it's not like you could use Cricut Design Space per se or another software. You're gonna end up creating your SVGs outside of Glowforge. Um, like in this case, I created mine in Adobe Illustrator and then I bring them into the Glowforge. And you can design a little bit in the Glowforge, it's just a little, it can be a little cumbersome. All right, I'm going to get as much as I can on one sheet, because we're gonna do two cuts here, just because the gnomes don't all fit on one. Okay, so now that I kind of have it all in one, I'm gonna zoom in here on the actual Glowforge. Now, the things that we see right now is most everything is orange. We do see this red shoe over here is red. It's got like a little dotted line, and that's because it's out of the cut lines, meaning um, right now it's not in the space to be cut. So you wanna make sure everything is in orange. We also have this one right here that is overlapping. So I'm just gonna move this. And this app can be used on your iPhone, your iPad, Android, pretty much everything. Over on the left here, we get to choose what we want. So I have some that say ignore and others that say cut. If you wanted to, you could change this to engrave, you could change it to score. And I'm gonna go hit print. And what this is gonna do is it's going to calculate the print and stuff. And how long it's going to take. Okay, is this ready to go? Yep. I'll let you know when I'm in the room. Okay. They won't hear me, right? They will not hear you. I can make okay. it, but I will no, not. No, it's okay. Because then it gets really noisy. You're never going to hear them anyway. So we're waiting for the timer to go. Or it's calculating time. Okay, going to you now. Hold on. No, hold on. What? Hold on, please. Now we're with, we're with you now. We're here? Yep. Okay. Careful on that other one. Okay, so this is the Glowforge Pro that we have all set up and ready to go. The light is blinking, letting us know that everything's ready, and this whole cut will only take four minutes and 12 seconds. You press it, the uh, fans uh, wind up. Uh, there are a few fans, there's an exhaust fan, and then there's a fan that blows across where the laser is, which is why you can see the, the smoke blowing really, really fast because it uh, keeps that area kind of cooled off. And right now it's doing the actual cut. Because of that, if you see that uh, QR code down there, the camera looks at that QR code and automatically tells the machine that this is medium draft board and sets all the parameters for speed, um, power and everything for you automatically. And boom, there it is right there. So once it knows what it's looking at, it's it's good to go you never know where it's really going to start it just kind of does its thing sorry for the jumpiness it's all this wi-fi and there's the exhaust It's a four inch dryer hose that goes out from the machine and then out my uh board and window we're going to change that to a 
5 8 or half inch plexiglass so it's all clear and then both machines will have an output. I'm trying to find how I can use PVC piping like 4 inch PVC piping and make it nice and clean and much easier to clean those too because you can't really clean uh, dryer vents. You have to kind of like throw them away and get some new ones. Oh, we're lost. We lost our signal. There it is. So bear with us. Hi, Jazzy. Now it looks like it's starting to cut the gnome, the top one now. We're down to two minutes and 22 seconds left. So easy to do this, so easy. Once you find something, you just put it in, you can size it all, you can do whatever you need to. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. If you're wearing headphones, you could probably hear it because that exhaust fan is very loud. Now you may have noticed um, that there was a, another big black thing in the background. That's our other fan for the other one. We took the, the uh, eternal internal fan out and used a external fan and it's super quiet, but it moves just as much. Does your house smell like a campfire? That room can, even though you've got it uh, um, exiting out the window, no matter what you do, you're st still going to get a little bit of smell, but it only lasts for maybe a day and then it's gone. Um, some people have the filter, but the, if you get the filter, you really can't cut this stuff, this MDF. It's so gummy that it can clog up your filters, uh, your big giant filter quite quickly. Um, so they kind of say don't. Uh, use so MDF. Get the next cut ready. Okay, come on. Uh, hold on one sec. We're gonna go. <clears throat> go ahead and come. Um, come on back. So it's got about 56 seconds left, and then he's going to get the other cut up and ready, and then we'll either go back and see it. And it shouldn't take as long. It all depends on what he's cutting. Of course, we still have to cut the the word joy. Is it back there, Sal? Yeah, she says you hear. Yeah, you can hear it if you hear pretty close. Did you, you not it. do it, or did you show me in there? Yeah. Of course. Oh, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't want it just to sit there. So. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna get the next cut ready. Give me one sec. So you can see how quick it was. Um, yeah, cutting is pretty quick, especially on this kind of material. Engraving takes a long time because it's got to go back and forth, back and forth, on whatever you're engraving. So engraving. I think a long that's. Time. When I got this machine, I thought engraving was going to be different, and I didn't realize engraving really is that. It's going just do, 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 do. It's like do, do, do. And I thought it was, I don't know what I thought. Like, I thought, Phew. and I told him, why is it taking so long? He's like, imagine it's going back and, and forth. forth. It's, it's, it's back moving, it's and moving forth. at the, the, like the width of a hair. Yes. So it's very, it's very time consuming. But I will say that engraving, especially if you use their high definition photo setting, is absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so we finished that cut. I'm going to go put a piece of draft. We're just you using. Um, Are you putting it all together? Or do you want to show that you take I'm going to show it going in and then it okay. registering and stuff. Okay. So, okay, let me share my screen here. Um, I can hit, I can do that I believe um, command I command four no actually I can't do anything because you're on that program oh just when I get done go ahead and hit share screen and show it and then I'll go do it and then you can hit print and then we should okay. be good to go huh? okay excuse me so give me just a moment I think it's command five. Hurry Hold on, please. Command four. Okay, go ahead. So he's gonna pull this out. This is a little hard to do when you're one-handed. As you can see, it's all just kind of falls apart. He's gonna pull that out and put it off to the side and then get them all released. And now he's going to cut, put in the other piece of wood. 
We line it up down in the corner. There's the registration mark again, that QR code. And once he shuts the, the lid, the camera will then look at that and know what it is. So let's... Um, Okay, one second. Got it. Oh, oh, crap. It just showed. I know. Um, I need. I didn't know you were coming. Okay. All right. Hold on. Just let me know when you hit print. I already did. Oh, you did? Yeah, I said it. Oh, I'm did. sorry. I didn't hear It's so loud in there, Matt. I'm sorry. Okay, so he's just let he's just letting it go. I'll show you what it looks like on the. So you can see, on here. Blow up here. So you can see that the uh, everything these are like the hands and everything, and then of course Joy is all right there as well. Now he doesn't have the camera. I don't think. So this is only this is going to only take like two minutes. Very quick. Hi, Jenna. So there's our other Glowforge. That's the basic. And this one's the Pro. This is the top of the line one. So it looks like it's starting to cut out the O for Joy. And then that should start on either the J or Y. It looks like it's gonna be the J next. Hi, Rocky Top. About 45 seconds left to finish out the word joy. So the Y will probably be next, and then the... After the Y, it'll do the uh, gnome itself. Very cool machine. The bigger the machines are, the the more power they can get. This one is a 45 watt power. The 100 watt power is which is really nice and cut thicker materials is faster. It's much bigger. The bigger that tube is, which you can see back there, the bigger that tube is, the more power it can do. So that's why these can only go up to about 45 watts because of the size. If they wanted something, something. Okay, if they want something faster and more powerful, they would have to make. Got it. No problem. Um, got it. Um, they would have to make a bigger machine, unless their you know physics can create smaller tubes and more power. You know, so very cool. Top Gun ornaments, cool, Jenna. This machine is called the Glow Forge. You can get up to $500 off if you use our code. It's down in the links, or at least on the link tree. You just go to, to that and boom, Gale High. There are things, Jasmine, there you go. You can save up to, you save $500 on the Pro, 250 on the, the one in the middle, which is called the Plus, and then it's one, something for the basic but if you're gonna go go big go with the pro the pro can also do a pass through so you can it's the same width but you can go as long as you want
You just keep feeding it, keep feeding it, keep feeding it. So that's when you can do really long kind of things like a, a growth charts or whatever, maybe a big long name. You can just cut it right off. So the difference between the machines is being asked by um, Fatima. The basic has a 40 watt system, a little slower, not by much, but a little slower. Um, doesn't have a pass through, neither, neither does the plus. The plus can, I believe is 45 watts, a little faster, but the pro has a pass through, has a special cooling system uh, that allows you to cut all day long without having any overheat problem stuff. Not to say the other machines will do that, but can do that. But those are made for where you're just doing little things here and there. But if you're seriously doing lots of cutting and you want to do bigger things, you the Pro is the way to go. And it is faster because it's five more watts of power. But it's not by a lot. You know, if something like the Basic may take, let's say, four minutes, the Pro could probably do it in three and a half or 315. So it's not like a whole bunch um, difference, but it is nice to have it. It does move a little faster, like when it's doing its presets and everything. That moves quickly. Uh, the other two move just nice and just at a nice pace. Who wants to buy you a new new glow board? Yay! Yeah, I thought the I wasn't. I couldn't remember if the plus was forty or forty five. It's been a while, but definitely the pro is forty five watts. Those big industrials are a hundred, uh, even more than that. I got a little overzealous on one of my. Uh -oh gnomes and when i was lifting him up i broke him uh -oh. <laughs> so i'm going to recut him really quick so that will happen sometimes if you have draft board on a cut that is very intricate if you're not careful removing it um it can break one trick we have found and sean found this trick is take the backing sheet off i did not he'll show you what i mean on this but i did not and because of that you don't get as clean of a cut. So this is the front right here. It's tape, this is masking tape basically done in sheets. Um, if you buy some for yourself, they call it um, transfer tape. It's basically the same thing. Medium tack or stronger is nice. They got the same thing on the, on the other side, exact same thing. So it's, and the reason they do that is that they don't know what you're cutting because you might have something that needs to be seen on both sides. And the reason you're doing that is that if you look closely to the edge here, it's burnt. This is all burnt. So it's burning this here too. Even though you can see this browning effect right here. And then if you look on the back, you've got the same thing. It would transfer to the board and you can get it cleaned up, but who wants to do all that okay. when you have the mask? I'm gonna go cut that and I'll be right okay. back. Just let me know when you're ready and I'll hit print. Well, I'll let you I know already hit print, I'm just going to print. Oh, I see, you already did. So that's why that now, because you because this is not going to be seen in the back, you can just take off this backing. It's just less, It's because it's got a glue backing that's just more gook and gump for the system to not have. But if you are going to be cutting something that's going to be seen on both sides, you definitely want your masking tape on both sides or left on there. You can buy wood that has nothing on it, and that's why you have to go buy some of that stuff and put it on there and, and make it... Uh, Covered up. You just want to make sure you have a good tack so it doesn't come off. I don't know which tack they use, but it's str it's strong. I think it's a strong tack. Um, it's harder to find. It's really hard to find. A CNC machine, um, Leanne asks, um, it's basically a router head. So you got a router and you have all kinds of different bits and you can take a big piece of wood and you can you can cut this on a CNC machine. You literally could be doing the same thing. I'm not sure the speed for something like that, but you can definitely do thick stuff with that. And so it'll change all these different uh, bits to do different types of cuts. So it's doing almost a three dimensional type of thing. So you can cut things and shave off things, dip, you know, cut into the stuff and get a, you know, depth within that big pieces of wood. So that's what a CNC machine is. It's basically a, a glorified and expensive, uh, somewhat expensive um, router machine. And, and this does an X, Y, and Z format, just like the like um, some other machines out there. 
Like we were looking at a CNC machine that is actually, it's only like $4,000. It's really not that bad at all. And it's got really great reviews. I forget the name of it. Um, it might be something, but it's, it's something we can't have in the house because one, we don't have the room. And two, we couldn't have it in all that stuff that we have in that room because it, it creates dust. Even though you have systems to have vacuums or help to keep it, uh, to alleviate some of that stuff, you definitely do not want to have it next to, especially the new machine. Um, you don't want dust and sawdust everywhere. So that would be something that we would have to have in a, an actual work. Yes, my Glowforge does need a cleaning. My big exhaust fan is due to get uh, cleaned out. It's taken a while. It yeah. Out too. yeah, it's very dirty. And I will be doing a video on that. Okay. So for those who have never seen it cleaned or if you haven't, I mean, there's some other video, videos out there that kind of show the same thing, but I'm going to do one for ourselves because some, yes. like, some people just like to watch us. Okay, so we are now at the point where we're going to prep everything. So at this point, our Glowforge has cut the three gnomes. I'm sorry. Let me get this so I can see what we're doing. That's okay. The three gnomes, we have our jo Joy word. And then we have all of our elements. And in your elements, you have shoes, noses, and the little hands. So we're going to put all of this, which is the noses and the hands, off to the side. So we really don't have to do much with that. The joy is going to get painted white. These will all get painted a separate color. And then the shoes will be separate. But we're at that point where we're going to start painting. So we'll start with our joy. Here we go. Let me go ahead and bring this up. Now, I have a product link list of everything that we have used in today's project. So you can utilize that. I'm going to get some music up. All right. Give me one sec. We have to disconnect our Wi-Fi for some reason. What? Can't do yeah. it. Don't want that to happen. Well, I don't make the list. I don't make the rules, Sean. Joy through the, the star, the poof, okay. and the point. There we go. All right. Or maybe not. We just need to reset all of our Sonos. I, oh, there it goes. Okay. So I use the Caesar weeding tool to get all of my backings off and the front, the protective paint. I love this. Now, every once in a while, depending on where you buy your material, this backing or the transfer tape or whatever you want to call it can be kind of sticky. And that's where this comes in handy. Also, if you have a very intricate cut, I've noticed sometimes this is because it's basically burning it to the wood. It's even more of a pesky. pesky Some, thing. Sometimes you can take a, a like a little pencil eraser and just erase it off. It's on the intricate stuff, or even just rub it with your finger and it'll just rub yeah. right off when it's really intricate. Now, for those of you who have a Glowforge and want to create this, I would use Adobe Illustrator to create your SVG. For those of you who do not have a Glowforge, but you still want to take advantage of a bundle like this, join our clubhouse. And this will get posted tomorrow in the clubhouse as a bundle. And all the details will be released tomorrow on this. I think that I think their masking tape is a, is a heavy tack. It's got to be. It's good the, stuff. Even the but... medium works nice. It's it's like it's not nothing close to this. Yeah. I'd love to know where they get it. Okay. So we are ready to paint. Now, for those of you who saw one of my last videos, I paint using a Cricut Strong Mat. So this is a Cricut Stronghold Mat, and I just take the things that I am going to paint and literally stick them down on the mat, and you'll see that the Strong Mat has enough to hold it. And what's nice about this is if you're gonna roll or even use a, a paintbrush, yeah. it's nice and easy to get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and take it all off on both sides. Yeah, go for it. Just make sure, yeah, those are fine. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some Ranger Distress 
This is the whitest of white Dixie Belle. I think it's called Cotton. Cotton. Their next one down is fluff. It's got a, it's almost like a dirty white. It's not off white. It's still white. It's just a, a dirty white. And see, I just take this and because it's on this Cricut mat, it doesn't move. I don't need to get my other finger all painty. If a little bit of the paint gets on this mat, no big deal because it washes right off. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you have to be careful on is if you're going to dry this um, using your hairdryer on the hot setting, you just don't want to like curl your mat. Yeah, but Not a good thing. Yeah. So, but you'll see it's so nice. I have this teeny tiny cut right here on my thumb. Oh no. It, like every time I bump it, it just- How did you oh, get that? I have no idea. It's just a teeny tiny cut, but it's like right in the spot where if you bump it, it hurts like hell. Sorry guys, I'm trying to look at the screen to make sure we, I don't, yep. we're not covered by our picture in picture. Oh, so I'm just going around and once this is all painted, like so, I'm just gonna put this off to the side. You can also hit your sides of your items. And this is really nice because the Cricut mat holds down this wood and it doesn't move. I tried their other mats, but the strong mat was the best. And I like this because if not, what ends up happening is you're gonna get paint, of course, all over your fingers, mm -hmm. but you're also going to get little fingerprints on your paint job. Oh. Which isn't bad, but it, this just helps out so nice. Yeah. Fatima said she enjoyed the gnomes that we created in, a fr in the frame with all the pieces. Mm -hmm. and then she gave them away as gifts. They were all adored. How nice. Oh, I love... Was that the Boo one or the last year Christmas one? I'd love to know. Okay, so... Sean is getting my gnome little guys ready. Oh, so, thanks. these are... I'm going to put this down here for a quick sec are gnome cutouts and these were designed um to go with a specific design of this and the only reason i'm bringing these out right now is we're going to paint these gnomes just their top hat so i do need to mark kind of where that is if not their little noses get a little bit but now that sean's got that ready i'm gonna thank you guys i'll do that what they just said about my cut put lavender on it and we have, oh, that's a good idea. we have lavender. We, oh boy, we got all kinds of oils. Thanks, I will do it. Because tell, believe me, it's just like every time I bump it, it hurts like hell. I can't use, like, it's so hard to button something. I'm so sorry. Okay, so the first one up we're going to paint is the red one. The red one has a little star on it, which it is this one. So you want to make sure that you have the right one facing up and... I grab my Cricut Bright Pad Go, which is the cord free one. And the only thing I'm doing right now is I want to line it up to see where my paint line is going to be. So we don't even really need to worry too much about anything else besides that. So basically, right here is where I'm going to end up with my paint line. And I'm going to take a marker or whatever else you want. This is your chalk marker. And that's all we really need to worry about because all I'm trying to do is give myself a guide of this is where we need to paint to. So let's do that for each single one. So if you you want to make sure that when you peel your tape off, you remind yourself which way is up because that's an easy way. Once you take that protective tape off, it is a little difficult to see where everything is. So once again, I'm just using this as a paint guide.
And I love using the bright pad for this. This is something I discovered a while ago because I was always frustrated on lining up, you know, stencils or anything. And I, by accident one day, was like, have my bright pad out, go. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can illuminate it. And my life was forever changed, Sean. Yep. Leanne says, I can't draw your clubhouse. Are you having troubles with a link, Leanne? Or... Leanne Atwood. Um, just let uh, Kim or Jazzy take yeah, care of Kim, it, Yeah, Kim, Jazzy, if you could help her out. That'd Thank be great. you. Thanks. Okay, so we have everything marked. I'm going to grab now this and let's start like I said with the red one there we go so the red one we're gonna end up doing um honky tonk red and then I have a little bit of collard greens and this is just oh yeah just a sec you want to grab the red one to show them what it's going to look like. So we're just doing the hat at this point. And we're just doing the base coat of the paint. Okay. So once again, I have these just in case you guys, all the paint is down below. And I like using this. This is their French, Dixie Bell's French tip brush. And I love the glass mat. This glass mat, I can... Just take my excess paint over off to the side and then grab it as I need it. So I'm just going to pull some of this. Now, be advised, this is raw wood. It is going to absorb pretty quick. Um, and if you want to, you could put a clear coat over it at first to kind of not absorb as much paint. Um, I'm okay with it absorbing the paint, but if you are using more of an expensive paint and you're worried about that, definitely... Um, do that. What I love about chalk paint, watered down, you guys will notice I have my honky tonk red in the little uh, jar. Um, I like to water down my paint because I get a really nice, especially if you're looking for a brush kind of finish to it. Mm -hmm. um, and it dries super quick this way. So I can now just grab on my hot setting. And then just, I hit my sides. You don't have to. Some people like that burnt edged. Some want to paint it. I like mine somewhere in the middle where it is. And the only reason why is most of the time I put so much paint, it will start dripping down the side. Um, so. Kaiko, yes, we are using proof grade. This is medium draft. Okay, so I want to give all of my known hats a little bit of texture. So I'm going to take whatever color I was using. In this case, it is that honky tonk red. I'm going to spruce a little bit over there. And then I'm grabbing some of the collard greens, which is kind of a dark brownish green. green. And I'm picking up some of the red, mixing it in with that brown, and getting kind of a darker red. And then I can go and give it some nice highlights. And if it's too dark and you think, ooh, that's too dark, you could just add a little bit more red, but it just gives it a little definition I love it. on his hat. And then we just... All right, so gnome one, done. Well, at least the paint. Okay, so we can put him off to the side while he dries. So what I love about the glass mat, this is my favorite thing. It cleans up so easy. And if you have a lot of paint on it, you can just put it under the sink. If you get super glue on it, you can easily 
Um, I don't know what you used, just a well, razor blade? Well, I, I cleaned it with water. Just don't use your fingers because then it'll stick to your fingers. But it'll come off a little bit. And then, yes, then I use a scraper to get the, the bulk, bulk off. Anything that's left over, the really finer material that's for, made with super glue, just use a, ra a straight razor blade and it'll come right off. Okay, so we're going to be doing the, the gnome that has the stars in his hat. And for that one, I am using... You mean the poof? The poof! Yeah, you just, the did, the, you just did the star guy. I am using for this one, col colon mustard? Colonel. Colonel Mustard. I gotta go watch yeah, my This is Colonel thing. Mustard. Who did In you? the library with, with the candlestick. The candlestick. Yes. So Colonel Mustard. Uh, Sean, do you want to show the sink? Is it hooked up? Yeah. Hold on. Just show him. I'm using the scrubby to wash my hands. So this is the scrubby. Um, some of you guys may already have this one. Uh, it's it's there's a brand new one. Uh, this one's the lemon. They also have an orange and a lime. Uh, all of them smell so good. Uh, it's made with uh, essential oils and whatever else they use, but it, it works really great. And if you have soft water, boy, it makes your hands so soft. Okay, come in. Soft, 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 soft. Love it. We love it. We change out. Buy lots of them. They have three different smells, yeah. too. Lemon, orange, and lime. So, uh, go to this one. So this is what it looks like. It's got it's it's literally this scrubby is all within inside the inside it too. And of course it's a little hard to see it on the hair. So if, for those who have these, you know exactly what yeah. I mean. But as the as the soap wears down, then more and more of the scrubby. And you can do whatever you want with the scrubby. Yep. You can keep it for whatever or just throw it away. So once again, I want to show you the difference here. So this is the paint I'm using. All I've done is put it in a smaller jar and added water. Because once again, I like it a little bit on the watery side. And we're just going to do the same process we did and on... it spreads nicely, too, when it's watered. Yeah, I agree. Because it is kind of a thicker type style paint. Pam Crandall loves the scrubby. She knows it. Yeah, my... Uh, we uh, The clubhouse, you have an option to join something... Uh, a club, Couture through Chalk Couture. And I gave... All of my club members one time um, scrubbies and I had a lot of people reach out to me and say how much they loved them and I have to be honest the first time I was given a scrubby it was by a, uh, one of you guys I don't remember who I wish I did and they said you should really use this and it sat in the box a long time because I was like I don't understand what I'm using it for and then I was like oh it's to clean your brushes and to clean your hands but I was like it's not very soapy. And then I realized as the soap wears down, the yeah. scrubby comes oh. out. Yes. Um, Fatima, you're right. It's a glycerin base. That's why it's so soft on your hands, especially with soft water. It, it's just that glycerin in there. It's really nice. I've never made soap before. I've seen it done, but I've never actually made it. It's a thing. I don't know. Some people, and I, one of the soaps that we get from uh, our, our trip to uh, Salt Lake is called... Uh, Wild cedar. Oh my god, it he smells loves it. so good. So I'm just on the hot setting. I watered this yellow down pretty good, so we. To kind of do a double I'm going to do a double coat and then dry it and then we'll get our brown out. Now you don't have to do the brown. The brown just once again, actually to be honest, in the final project, you don't really see that brown color unless you look. But what it does is from a distance, it gives it a nice texture, which you will appreciate. Okay, so I'm going to dry this. All right. Sean, will you dry that for me? I can. I'm going to grab a right. cloth. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man, that was 
I knew that was coming. Holy moly, guacamole. Sorry about that. I even knew that was coming. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna add a little bit of that collard green again, which is, I think, more of a brown, but to each his own. This one you do want to be a little bit careful on because the yellow is such a light color that brown really will Jeez. darken it quick. Yeah. So you can even see right there it's too much, which means I'm going to waste some paint. But that's okay. There we go. And then we're just going to add little... Yeah, that's even still too dark. There we go. You want it dark, but not just to give it those elements. But it, once you get too dark, it turns into something else entirely. There we go. All right, that one is done. Let's move on to our next color, which is going to be our green. Grab this. I'm going to actually clean this in the sink because I have so much paint. Sean can show you how easy this cleans. I love, and they actually, when I'm finished cleaning, is the small, oh, the small one's right there. You can show them. The small. The glass mat portrait oh. in the little case. Yes. <clears throat> Run your water, grab a little scrubby and go. That's all it does. So simple, so nice. So they also made a little travel buddy version of this thing. So here's the small one. My here's my hand. This one still has its. Uh, it's got a, a Teflon sticky Teflon cover, and of course the white box so you can mix paints and whatnot. But uh, this is just a nice little small one. And they do Pretty make cute. It for left and they make it for left hander so this can be on this side instead so you're not crossing over and you can just do it right here so if you're left handed which I am not <laughs> I'm right handed but yeah that's the way they made this for those who have never used one of these um, you just you put your little paints in here and you can dip it and then you can mix down here and you're yeah. good to go it's awesome okay so need, uh, our last cutie patootie gnome is in green so this guy, or girl, I should say. Okay, just a sec. I mixed myself up. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm good. Okay. So this one, um, I have to kind of mix the color. So I think I want to do it. So this one, we're mixing three different colors to get to the green I want because I don't want it too Christmassy green but I want it Christmassy green so I'm gonna start with tree frog green and this is exactly what this is kind of used for so we're gonna put tree frog green here yeah, it's bright yes There we go. So essentially, I want it to complement, be a good offset to this color. Um, and you can see in my final one, can you bring that guy out? The green I kind of ended up with there. It's a little bit more. I think a little more dark. Yeah, because I kind of want it to look like an evergreen tree. There we go, we're getting there. There we go. Dog hair? Yep. You know it. Gotta love the dog hair. I love my doggies. One of them is not in here. I don't know what his deal is lately. He likes to just be in the office. And I even have a bed in here for him, but he wants nothing to do with us. He is getting so That's big, right. you guys. Now we need a when the last time he was officially weighed, he was 62 pounds, but I bet you he's probably more like 68. Yeah, we should. He's so heavy now. 
He is the sweet. He's turning out. He's a, a he is a sweet, ornery, stubborn. Yeah, he's a little poop at times, but doesn't listen worth a ding. Nope, not one bit. All right, let's try this bad boy. And just like my yellow, this is a little bit on. What are you doing? What happened to my uh, camera? Oh, it's that's right. It's still back in the. Do you need it? I can go grab um, it. Just dry this and I'll go grab it. I know exactly where it is. It just needs to be turned off. I turned it off, but did you want it to get close-ups here? Is that what no, you wanted? No, no, I just wanted to make sure it was true. Oh, I turned it off. Oh, thanks. Yep. You're fine then. Okay. So will you dry that for me? Yes. Are you okay, Hunter babies? All right, a little heat here. Uh oh! Rat row! Rat row! I got it! Don't worry, I got it! Thank you. Please, love? Okay. How so, we need to send Luna and Hunter Puppet Camp. Hi, Luna. Me do. Okay, so, back to the project. My fault. So, we are now going to add a little bit of slate, or not slate, colored green, sorry, for that darker green color. And this one, it's kind of nice because it's already got the kind of green-gray tinge to it. So, we're just going to add a little bit of that green frog. Look at that, that's perfect. Once again, you're just trying to add a little bit of definition. There you go. And now we can move on to our accessory pieces. So let's go ahead and cover up all the stuff we don't need. You can come up to us real quick while I get organizada. So once again, all the links are down below. If you want to join our clubhouse group, that is where we're going to be doing this bundle and don't forget for those of you who are subscribers or joined our membership program tomorrow will be my first Ken's Confessions I am so freaking excited and I can't tell you guys enough how much I need to go wash my hands but how much Having our basement, all of our work down here, how much of a difference? Yep, it's a huge difference. We love it. Sounds like somebody is playing a very loud bass outside. Very strange. Wow, 78 pounds. That's crazy, Amanda. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do... We don't have to do too much to their noses and hands. I know some of you may want to, if you buy this bundle, like give it some different color tones. We're just leaving it the same color as the boards, but the shoes we want to paint. Now the shoes are only on two of the gnomes. So if we bring out the, what our basis is, don't fall. Okay. So. Here's the, the basis. Do you want to come down here so they can see what we're doing, love? Yeah. Thank you. So you can see this one goes here. This one goes here. This one goes there. Mm -hmm. That one goes there. So this is an extra one. So this is where you want to make sure you are... I like to take all the bombs off and leave the top on until I'm about ready to paint them. Just so that way I know which way they go. There we go. Um, where's that one you just did? That's the same as that one. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. Move these guys out of the way. Okay. So, for this, we're using something called 
Dixieville Dirt. Ooh. Now, Dixieville Dirt is just what it says. It is not like dirt that they got somewhere, but it's... It's... Remember playing around the places that are so so dirty dirt that it has turned to powder? Yeah. That's what Basically it's like. Basically what it looks like. So, powder. this is how we do this. We're going to do this for each one. We're going to start by taking the top of the transfer tape off. Grab a paintbrush, and we're grabbing some transfer gel from Decofoil. You could use really any glue for this. We just want to get a nice, even coat of that on. And then I'm literally just dropping it in my Dixie Bell dirt. I'm going to tap a little bit, grab one side. And there you go. Easy breezy. If you accidentally drop a side. Just dunk it in. It's really lightweight stuff. So Sean can kind of close up while I do the next few. Do you want it to be on the white? Would it be better? Yeah, it might be better. Okay. So I'm gonna try to also zoom in here so you guys can see the dirt and what I'm doing. Once again, I just put my transfer gel down yeah, almost ash-like. It's a good word, a good way of putting it too. And these are Caesar's tweezers. Caesar's tweezers? Yeah. I gave them on 143 vinyl, but that's whose it is. Mm -hmm. So once this is done, you'll just put these off to the side and let them dry. The transfer gel underneath of it will dry and that dirt will dry to it. Any excess dirt, because there is going to be excess dirt that just clumped on the top, uh, we're going to shake off before we glue it on our project. Heidi, uh, Heidi says, I wonder if you add water to the dirt and if you could use it like paint. Oh, I bet you you could because I've mixed it before with like um, mousse and stuff. So, yeah. And it does come in different colors. This is their... This is their... Uh, Ash, earth. earth, so there's a dark gray, a light gray, and a gray. Oh, this is brown. Oh, yeah. Brown. Gray and... Uh, a light gray, I think. One is ash, earth, and... Where are they? They're right there, next to the crackle. Charcoal. So a dark gray, light gray is ash. Okay. So, there they are. A little will go a long way of this stuff. Yeah, it does. Thanks, Johnny. And we're just going to have them go chillax over here as they dry. Once again, I'm not doing anything on these guys' little noses or anything. We're just going to let it chillax. All right. I'm going to clean my board. You can go up test real quick. Mm -hmm. So we have all of our element pieces done. So now we can actually start on decorating the gnomes and the joy. So I'm going to start. Sorry. Man. We're going to start with the joy because that's what we first painted. So I'm going to pull it up off of. And then I'm going to show you how easy this is to clean. Sean's going to. Or I'll. Uh, we need to make sure those are dry, but this just to show you how easy the cricket mat. How did you did you use the baby wipe last time or would you? No, use... I used I ran it underwater. Yeah, ready. Yeah. Go ahead. Move your head. You probably can't hear me.
So he's putting it off to the side on the rack, sticky side up so it can air dry. I'm bringing in sticky back. Yeah. yeah. The inside of the O was wet. That looks so dirty. What looks dirty? What you oh. just did. Mm -hmm. Show everyone what you just did. I put my finger in the hole. No, you didn't do I, it like... I only did this. You did that, but look at my angle. Now do it. And you were going in and out with it. I know. Why were you doing because that, dirty boy? Still, see, it was still wet. You're so dirty. Dirty boy. No. That goes on. You guys, he's going to get us demonetized. That was good. Whoa. That's good. That's good. good. Go. He's going to get us demonetized. Did you see the action he was doing? I'm telling you. Life with Sean. And he sits there and says, oh, well, it's fine. it's fine. Until I say, Sean, we got demonetized. Okay, that's going to cost us a lot of money. It's fine. Okay, we are going to zoom out a little bit so you can see that. Okay, so if you get this bundle in our clubhouse, you'll get these three joy letters. And you'll get a joy silkscreen. Silkscreen. But you're going to say, Ken, sometimes I have a problem lining it up. Don't you worry. Look at this. Pew. So we're going to line up our J first. How much is your offset? 0.15. No, 0 0.10. Can you explain to people what an offset is, Sean? So take the edge of anything, like these letters, the edge, and you go out 0.10 which now you have an offset all the way around uh, whatever you just cut. This allows you to be able to have an edge to whatever you cut. I like doing Even. this. When we talk to people, we're going to emphasize, emphasize. a word. Today we're playing with gnomes. <laughs> no. Can you say that, kids? <laughs> gnomes. Jeez, so the gnomes are the same way. If, you, if you're to look at it, once he does the top part, there is an offset with that as well. So when I create my files, because these are files I create, I like an offset. You don't have to have an offset. Some people don't like it. I like the look of an offset. Look at it. It gives it just that nice, finished look. Okay. So we're going to move this. I need to get something to get my nose to stop running. Sorry. It's a nap or not a napkin, but. Uh, Do you have a paper towels in there or no? Not in here, no. Boo, 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 boo. Okay. We'll just use a Norwex cloth. Okay, so this is getting straight up glitter. So when I do straight up glitter. To alleviate Sean's stress, I have a sheet of paper ready to go to put our glitter back in. So the joy is the yellow glitter. So the glitter I'm using for that is called Sandcastle. The O is my green, which is Lagoon. Lagoon. And the red is Sangria. Sangria. Okay, so the way I do this, once again, I'm using transfer gel. The reason I like transfer gel with glitter is you get a little bit more time to work with it and it gives you a little bit of a finer line on your glitter. So we'll start with our J. And this one's a little, it's not tough, it's just making sure you get it all because it's white paint. So making sure you get that transfer gel on all the areas. You'll know right away because when you lift it up, you'll see a slight. Let me see if you guys can see that. I don't know. Me... Yeah, they can. It's good. Okay. okay, so while this is still oops, wet, I just come right over here, put it on my paper, take the lid off. 
glitter, glitter, glitter makes the world go round. Tap, tap, tap. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Look at that. Crazy. Crazy good. I'll make it as much definition as I want it. So I am going to go in. While your glitter is still wet, you can actually go in with this Caesar tool, which I love, and just give it, basically push your glitter around to where you can get more of your defined letters. You don't have to do this. Basically, this means I pushed too hard on my transfer gel and it squished out. But I want definition on that. So I'm just pushing. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now the glitter on this side is just there by static electricity, which we'll deal with later. But if you want to define your glitter, there we go. Oh, wow. So I put all my excess right back in the jar. Oop. What? Went too far. You went too far? Went too far. Not good, Shawnee. Not good. Now we're good. Now we're back. Moving on to our O, which is going to be... Green. Yes. So first we'll get our gel. That green is so Christmassy, I can't stand it. Just can't stand it! So, less is more on transfer gel. The reason my J didn't turn out as well is I put too much transfer gel. This one I put a very thin amount, and I got a much better look. Transfer. So if you do this method, less is more. And that's why I use the transfer gel is it gives you more of a defined look. Okay, right, so let's move on to our O or our Y. And then I will have Sean grab um, the vacuum is out there, I think, by my desk. It's right there. Oh, because I know he is already having anxiety. What is it about glitter that gives you anxiety, Sean? Let's talk about this. It just gets everywhere. And you can never get rid of it. Yes, you can. Yeah. You are being dramatic. It's dramatic everywhere. Annie. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You guys, he's so dramatic. Dramatic. Which is okay, because glitter is dramatic. Ooh, look at that. See, look at that. Much better transfer if you do less is more than I did on my gold. So, lesson learned. Now, you could wipe off this glitter in the transfer gel and redo the J, but I'm okay with it. Um, but that's what's nice is because this transfer gel will take longer to set, you get a little bit more work time with it. Okay, so we're going to put these off to the side, and then we're going to allow these guys over here to chillax. Don't get me wrong, glitter is Okay, I'm gonna get out of Sean's way here so he doesn't. It is pretty, but it's everywhere. Here we go. Kind deal. It's all nice and clean. You see him out there sleeping. He is tuckered out. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. It's time to move on to our gnomes. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. 
The gnomes are a three-step process. Three steps, Ken. Please explain. We are going to put our silk screen on the top. Okay. We are going to put our transfer gel on the top because we're going to put glitter. All right. The bottom, we're going to put candy apple paste. Then up here, we're going to put transfer gel and a different glitter. Okay? So, Sean, he's fine. He's yeah, going to follow. I was, I was just looking. Okay. Didn't so, even realize it was different. We're going to first grab our transfer we're using. So, this is the gnome transfer. It is this cutie patootie with the star. So, this, you want to grab your Go or Bright Pad Go because you really do want to make sure that this has, because I created this file with an offset, we really do want it to line up. So we want to make sure that offset goes down through the whole gnome and up through here. And by offset, you should see it. Like you can see up top, it's a little heavy on the left-hand side. Right about there. What do you think? Hmm. Okay. So as I do this, Sean can kind of explain my process. I'm going to be using for glitter. Two different glitters. We're using Sangria for the most, but on the hat, we're using Ruby Sandals, okay? Ruby Sandals. Okay. Now, if you have um, some sort of paste that has shimmer in it, um, you could definitely use that and not do the glitter. But if I'm going to use just glitter, I like using this because it dries clear. And I'm getting really close to the gnome's uh, like nose area. So for me, I like this just because I have a little bit more time to get my glitter on and it dries clear so i get that beautiful color from underneath still without compromising too much Sean. okay so we have that are we on board so far shawnee mm -hmm. okay then i'm going to grab candy apple paste and that's going to be this whole bottom part as soon as i lift this i'm going to grab my sangria and put on the top of the gnome at an angle so that way it falls away from the candy apple we don't want it to fall onto our candy apple okay so we're going to remove all of our excess right back in the jar looks like that needs to be just above there a little bit where right there no oh, that's where his hat comes Okay, grab my paper. And my sangria. And actually, thank you for getting that ready, but we're actually gonna do it with Cheeky. the lid on. Okay, we're gonna lift this up. I'm gonna give that to Shawnee. And then when I do the glitter part, we're doing it at, I'm holding the base of him and then doing it at an angle so the glitter falls away from the candy apple on the bottom. And then I just be, use caution towards his nose area. We will be gluing a nose up here so if you do get a little bit on there, it's not a huge deal. So just coat the thing, and then you're gonna take him upside down. Tap, tap, tap. So freaking cute. I can't even. Okay, so this stuff goes right back in. Go Do you wanna this. put, the, you're gonna go, no, you can wash, or put this in, I'll go wash, because then you're gonna wanna vacuum. Because we're gonna do the ruby slippers next.
Then time for some vacuuming. Nothing. Whoa. On the paper. Yeah, you even cleaned it off the paper. Okay. Now, we're going to take our same gnome and on his hat. We're gonna grab a little brushy brush. Where are you, brushy brush? And we're gonna have sangria and ruby sim ruby sandals. So I'm gonna start with some more of this transfer gel. And you're just going to paint the entire thing in transfer gel, just like that. Start with ruby. Sand. Someone's awake. That's big. Yep. That is chunky. So, once you have it on, we're going to tap it off. And this is where a trick comes in. Right now, because of the chunky, it kind of gets rid of the star. So take your Caesar weeding tool, and I just go around it to get any of that chunk. Off the edge. Like so, and then all of the spots, there's a little bit of some glue showing, so I just use sangria to fill in those. Once again, we're gonna, there you go. We'll let Sean do a close up of that, and he's gonna chillax. And we're moving on to our next gnome. Isn't he cute? He's not done yet. We still have to put his shoes and nose on, but he's cute, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like him too. He does look like the ruby slippers. Okay, so let's go ahead and do... Do you want to do our yellow gnome next or our green gnome next, Sean? Uh, let's, do the, let's do the green. Okay. So the green node just has one glitter. He doesn't have two. So once again, we're going to center it using our... What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. No, I've used these transfers already once today. That's the white from the... It's fine. I've already used these once today, washed them. So, and they've been, as you can see, well used. We love our gnomes. So just like we did on the other one, we're going to use the transfer gel on the top and then meadow on the bottom. So this is Meadow. Now you'll notice on this one, I'm not really, uh, uh, because they're holding letters, I wasn't too worried about, you know, coloring their beards. And that's why I went with the color theme I did was just like to very basic green, red, and yellow for Christmas. And we're not worried about, you know, the beards behind the, the, whole thing should be based around the joy 
Okay, so I'm going to remove my excess. Give this to Sean for him to go clean. Oh, look at him. And same thing, we're going to go at an angle with our glitter. This is, remember, uh, Lagoon. This is from... Starcraft, I got it on 143 vinyl. All the products are in our product list link tree. But shaking that glitter on, and we want to just make sure it's an angle because we want to be careful when we get to the top. Once again, if you accidentally get a little bit on the beard, it's not dire, but you want to just, I go very slow up here. Okay, and once we're done, we can just get that excess. Tap, tap, tap. Oh my gosh, you guys. I cannot. I cannot. All right, so he's going to go chillax with the red one. And we can now do our yellow gnome. Get my little Dyson vacuum. They actually don't make this one anymore. Yeah. No, because it, they have the stick vacuum. I'm going to go fill this up with water. You can go up on you for a quick sec. Do a check in with everyone. Check in, check in, check in. Check in. <laughs> These would also look nice in the colors of Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. Oh, no. Yeah, absolutely. They would. <coughs> <coughs> Kwanzaa, what's uh, black, red, and there's another color in there. Yellow, maybe? Right. I'm not sure what the color of Hanukkah is, but yeah. Isn't it blue and yellow? Blue, white, and something, but mm. Kwanzaa, I think, is black, red, and something. I thought black, red, and yellow, but I'm not sure. Oh, wait. Let's grab our last gnome. The transfer that goes with it. for a second okay what's wrong this looked like it was it was too far down but you're fine is that better yep yeah it's it was fine it just at, for a oh, brief second here i have it messed up question i'll answer this really quick um from a viewer saying they want to buy this bright pad for their child um but it's expensive and is it durable and it is so i've dropped this thing i can't even tell you how many times i've used a razor blade on it you can see right now there's paint all over it and it comes right off so is 99 dollars too much for this absolutely <laughs> would i buy it again for 99 dollars absolutely because it's durable it's got five light settings it doesn't have a cord so it's worth the money to me but i get other people might say "Ooh, it's a little high all right so same process as we've been doing as before we're going to do the transfer gel on the top and then this is sunny side
Green, black, green, black, red for Kwanzaa and blue, white, silver for Hanukkah. There you go. Thank you very much there, Fatima. And that was the light plat. Light Did pad. it break? Nope. Durable. Durable. Dropped it. Although it did land on the cord, so. Okay, so this one we're using two different golds. The first one is going to be Sandcastle. So same process, we're gonna go at an angle. Let me lift this up. Okay, and so let me get this glitter picked up. And then on, where did my paper go? Oh, it's right here. On his little, what are we calling this, Sean? A poof? The poof. The poof. So we're going to take transfer gel and just paint it on. Mm -hmm. On to poof. On to poof. And this guy is going to get this. This is called Starry Night. This is one of the ones that we looked at yesterday their little Starry, stars Starry night with a hole in them and the same thing we're going to do on this that we did on the other one because the stars will overhang a little bit so just take your weeding tool you can even really take your finger and just run along that poof And then I just take more of the sand castle and fill in all the other spots. And then we're going to hit it. Okay. Let me go throw this away and you can show them that. Okay, so far, Sean, what's your favorite color gnome? Um, you can bring them all in. I'm just showing the... Yes. Oh my gosh, so cute! I cannot. Okay, tell me what your favorite color is before we move on to our next step. That yellow is pretty cool. I love the yellow. It's like my favorite, I think. 
I mean, they're all cute, but my ye the yellow has a special place on my heart. All right. So as you guys figure out which one's your favorite, let me just tell you what I'm doing in the background. We are getting our super glue ready. And what is my favorite super glue, Sean? Oh, it's that wonderful stuff called um, Daps. Yeah. Oh, I'm proud of you. Dap yes. Durable, um, so it's the Dap Quick Dry. Quick Dry. So I love this stuff. The Rapid Fuse Rapid Quick Fuse. Dry. That's what I was thinking of. Rapid mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to use to start building up our gnomes. That's wrapped and fused. 30 seconds. That's done. That's ready. So first, let's put on their noses. Where is my... Do you have... Oh, you have it. Okay. So for those of you that join the clubhouse and get the bundle, the noses will come with it. There's three noses. And we're going to, maybe not. Oh, there it goes. I know these are all <clears throat> slightly different. That's this one here. This isn't the glue I used today. This is like clogged up glue. Yeah, this one's clogged. I have my glue somewhere. Give me a sec here. Excuse me, I'm going to open this. I think it might be... Alright, listen, Windows. Where did Ken put his glue? This is not a test, Sean! This is not a test. Do you know where it is? Uh, you gave me... Oh, it's on the desk. On the desk. Yeah, not even air goes through it so bad. It is so clogged. So clogged. I think these dogs ran a marathon today. I would think. I mean, all they do is sit there and watch me and Jazzy work. And go outside, inside, outside, inside. Oh, that's not his nose. It's this one. Ah, good thing I caught that. Mama Disney says, I'm not a, a gnome girl, but these are awesome. They I are know. Awesome. So I told Jazzy what I was doing, and I was like, I want to do another gnome bundle for Christmas. And she was like, okay, well, what are you going to do? And so I just came back here and created, and I showed her, and she was like, oh, my gosh, these are so cute. I'm a gnome person. You know that about me. Which one do you have? I think this one goes. No, I have his. That one I think goes there. Right. I left the tape out so you know which one was top. Yeah, if you don't get these things closed correctly, they will clog up on you. Will you hold it just that way for me? Mm -hmm. Well, that's got a really nasty tip. Ready? Yep. So Sean's putting my glue down. We're putting the noses on. And then what we're going to do is move directly onto their little cutie patootie feet. So let me move them up. This one doesn't have any feet. Or feetsies. That's not like feces and I didn't mean for it to. Okay, so here is our shoes that have been drying in the addictable dirt. Sean is unclogging my... Not the clogged one, but... Okay, can you get it? Yep. Get it going and get their feetsies glued down. I almost want you to bring the camera out here because he is halfway behind that dresser.
Sean's in create mode. Whenever Sean goes silent. This looks like it's back. And his it's little backwards. freaking tongue comes up. Wait till he. It's backwards. What? It's backwards. Oh, okay. Good. See, good thing Sean was paying attention. I would have just given my gnome a backwards gnome thingy. Backwards feet. It'd be like a little kiddo with his. Oh, that would have been so sad. Poor little gnome guy that wouldn't even know what happened to him. He'd be like, why am I, why can't I ride my bike like everyone else? And he'd be like, because you have two left feet. And he'd say, why, why, why do I have two left feet? Because your daddy, Kenny, effed it up. He effed up your life, little dude. All right. If somebody could be so kind to answer Miss Barbara Johnson. Hi, Barbara Johnson. That'd be great. Jazzy or Kim or somebody. We'll get you, Barbara, and if not, I will get you at here soon. Ken, you're such a great salesperson. I usually like to find Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Lisa. All right, so we are going to do the joy now. So it is actually like this. Okay, so you have a couple options here. Option one is you could do what we're doing, which I'm just super gluing. But... If you want the ability to change it out through the year, you could use magnets. You could. You could. But only three words. Three letter words. Correct. Mom, dad, joy. Correct. All right. So here is my little trick on this glitter. This glitter, you can see by static electricity is stuck, right? Let's move these guys out of the way. I take this tool, which is... I guess a squeegee paint a squeegee, brush. Squeegee tipped. And I just run it along where I don't want my glitter and it breaks up the static electricity. And then I just, just like that. Oh, time for your 730s. Even I know. Though, even I'll, though it's 830 though. I will go grab those in a minute. And that just gets rid of that static electricity on that glitter so once we are ready we'll get our you want to get that one for me yep. so I'm gonna start with my J can you zoom out so we can yeah. it's a little well we were watching you do this oh okay 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 okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so we're gonna put super glue on our J now, if you want to, you can get the all the letters kind of cockeyed or crooked, whatever. I'm just going to go nice up and down with it. Straight on crouton. Straight on crouton. And then I line it up with this guy, kind of the J with his nose. Like so. And then I put my other guys right next to this one. Because see, this one's... A little got a little lip on it, which is fine, but you want to make sure your O and the O goes like this, the offset. Now, what I really love about this bundle, when we did our Halloween bundle using these gnomes, it kind of, I mean, you could do whatever you want with it, but these are going to be completely, um, you can use them, like you can stand them up on their own. So I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. Will you make sure my, all my letters are, is that all straight? And then we can take off, we take off the box to these guys. Just, okay. Just the backs. No, you can take the front and backs off. So you'll get, if you get the bundle, you'll get all six hands. And I just position them wherever on each letter to where it looks like they're holding it. And when you do this, I only put glue on the tip of the fingers. Now, if you're using magnets, maybe a little different, but... 
Thank you, Sean. I'll let you do those. So I'm just going to put the glue right here on their little fingers. <clears throat> Heidi came up with a cool idea. She said, or you can make a banner with large sayings to go across the fronts. Oh, yeah. You could do that. That'd be kind of cool. So I'm going to put that little hand there holding the J. And then the other one is going to be like he's hugging it. So once again, I just do it on the fingertips. And I just hold it for a few seconds, not a ton. Just enough to adhere to the board. This is this draft board is so light that it would adhere. And this glue dries so fast. On the O, we're just going to have one hand kind of down here. The other hand kind of on the other side. And then the last guy. Here we get that one. Mm -hmm. Same on the joy. We're going to... The Y. Or the, the J. We're going to put the hands a little... Off a little bit on this. So he's going to hold the Y from under here. And then up under here. Now, at this point, I'm going to ask Sean to turn on my hot glue gun. <clears throat> I do recommend letting these just chillax here while you get your hot glue gun hot. Just because even though that glue dries pretty freaking fast, um, these hands are just holding on, you know, to the tips of those letters. So we are done with our super glue at this point. We need our hot glue on, and then I will show you what we're using for the stands while that charges. Oh, I don't have a pack. Wait, I might. Okay, so can we move? As our hot glue is heating up, the trick on these standing on their own is behind them. So here's the completed one. And you can see he stands up by himself. And the reason why is I'm using what's called our simple shape bases on the back. So the people that buy this bundle will get this. They come two in a pack, just like this. And essentially all I did was hot glue them like so and then hot glue that to that. Yep. Now, I, because I made this, only have one set left of these. So what I had Sean do was take my... Board base. Board and base and cut them down. They're the exact same. They're thicker, but they're the same height. Yes. So that is, if you can improvise on that yeah. part. You and could what take, are you, will you show them the glue you, gun you're using? Yeah, you can even use a two by two. If you had some 2x2 two two stock sitting somewhere, you'd use it the same thing. And these are approximately, <clears throat> for all our Canadian friends, they are 60, eh, 60 or six, 6 centimeters. For our American friends, that equates to about 2 and, let's see, 1, 2, let's see, one, two, three eighths. Yeah, two and three eighths. See how 60 is easier than two and three eighths? That's why sometimes Metro could be fun. Huh? Yes, I'm doing that one next. Glue gun. Let's go to this camera here, and we're going to go five. Whoops. <laughs> I did something. This is the baby glue gun. For those who have not seen this yet, this is the tiny little glue gun. Super lightweight. For somebody who has arthritis and having troubles to carry the heavier ones, the base itself heats up the gun. So the ba the battery is inside the base, but this lifts right up. And the cool thing, it also has a little drip tray here. We love that The glue new gun. one, the new gun will have a flip tray and yes. has two heat, two heat settings. So the new gun coming, we don't have it yet. It's on my Christmas list. I have to tap on. Is 
two heat settings, yep. a drip tray. Yep. So excited. Yeah. But this one, that this one is too. awesome because it's nice and compact. Yeah. All right. So we have our gnomes. We have our joy. So let's go ahead and get them set. Mm -hmm. So we are going to start with putting some glue right here on your simple shapes. And I just push them together. Just like so. I'm gonna let these chillax. Hi Simon, how are you? Oh, hi Simon. I'm missing one. Oh, here it is. Simon, I haven't seen you in a while, but I've been watching your TikToks and I'm loving all of your TikToks and your little tips and tricks. Nice. If you guys don't know who Simon is, go follow him. Yeah. Simon this, Hurley. This gentleman right. And it's not allowing me. There it goes. There he is. <laughs> um, do you I'm know? hoping, Simon, eventually we will be able to go back into the real world and I can go to a creativation or some craft meetup and see you again. I think it's been two years since I've seen you. Yeah. Says, do you know when Frosh, Frobisher, Frobisher? I don't know what that is. I wonder if she meant Ryobi. Oh, probably Home Depot Ryobi, yeah. yeah. Okay, so all we have to do now is stand up our gnomes. So the way I did this, super easy, is you just add your glue onto your simple shape bases that Another we've done. Right Thank you. Take your gnome. So we're going to put this straight up. And I took my gnome and literally just laid him onto the simple shapes. And I'm going to press and let it dry. Okay, so we got that one. Let's grab our O. So once again, I'm just adding some hot glue. I recommend doing this in hot glue versus the um, super glue because you're going to get a much stronger hold. I think these are not fitting, love. Oh, yeah, they are. Sorry. Okay, so once again, putting it up. And what did you see just happen? Oh, what happened? I, oh, yeah. So the, all the excess dirt, we talked about this, was going to well. fall off, and it just did. Yep. So that's that excess Dixie Bell. you could bell. take um, something like uh, hairspray and put it on it. Oh, I guess that could be. Could work. Gnomes are falling down, falling down, falling down. Poor little gnomes. I'm sorry, guys. I got too excited. All right, excuse me, Sean. Mm -hmm. I am going to get out of the way. Let me do this. And, ooh, do we have our vacuum? Mm -hmm. Get that Dixie Bell. And we are done. Sean's going to show you guys them all set up. They are so cute! How cute are these, Shawnee? These are awesome. I love them! Give me a second. I'll go to... Right there, and then go up. It's backwards. You have... Oh. Yo -jo. Yo -ish. Yo -ish. Merry Christmas, yoish! Yoish. Aren't they cute? They're basic. The colors are perfect for Christmas. Yep. And what I love about it, sorry, I'm going to be in the way, is you have different options. You can do it nice and separate and do nice greenery in there. You can have them kind of tucked behind each other. You can have them going in a line like this. Like there's just all of these display options. It's very cool. Very cool. And of course, it doesn't have to be this color. They could be whatever color you want, whatever color that might be out there. No, they have to be that color. They have to be this color. If you're not a fan of yellow, you could do maybe a white for Christmas as well. No, they have to be that color. Well, there you go. See, this color or there. Yeah, this, this, uh, um, let's see if I can get a, a close up on this one again. So. I love him. Whoops, darn it. 
What are we trying to do? The the ruby slipper, basic. It's it's the ruby slipper, uh, chunky glitter. Look how big and beautiful that is. Oh, are you talking about me? Would you stop? <laughs> You guys, I could not be happier the way these turned out. I love them. Yeah. They're simple, yet classy. They could be, like Sean said, any color you want. Yeah. Um, so if you are wanting to buy this bundle, check us out in our Clubhouse group. The link is down below. Mm -hmm. And these will go live tomorrow in the bundle. Mm -hmm. For our Club Couture members... Um, we have a special bundle for you too if you've already bought the gnome transfer. So check that tomorrow. For all the links we use tonight, check our links down below. And for those of you who are part of our subscription on YouTube, I will be doing my Ken's confessions tomorrow. Ken, so about what time do you know? I don't know yet, but we'll usually it's around 3:30, 3 30, 4 30 yeah. in the afternoon. So I'll still be driving. Yes. Up until five ish. Yes. It, we had our, fir, our we had our first official snowfall. It was. And first snowfall. Yeah, so first snowfall. All right, everyone. I just want to thank you guys so much for joining us tonight and we will see you tomorrow. Yep.